Hey guys, Miss Hanley here, and today I'm here to talk about meter. Meter is the rhythmic patterns in a line of poetry resulting in the stressed and unstressed syllables throughout the line. When it comes to understanding meter, we notate it through stressed and unstressed syllables. The stressed notation is a dash line. An unstressed notation for a syllable would be a small u. The easiest way to remember that is that unstressed begins with u, and therefore the shape of that notation is a u. The stress is like a dash, like you're hitting that syllable. So how does this work in poetry and in real life? You can determine the meter of a poem through the stressed syllables in natural speech. The type of meter we're going to be talking about in class is called an I am. An I am includes one stressed syllable and one unstressed syllable. In an I am, you normally see dashes and u's. After one dash and one u, you would put a vertical line to indicate that this poem has one foot. With an I am, in different poems, there can be a certain number of feet in a poem. Let's see what that would look like in an actual poem. This is a poem by Alfred Lord Tennyson. In each line, there are a specific amount of syllables, and when we annotate for the meter, we're going to see exactly how many feet per line there are. Let's take a look. Let's start with the first line. The wrinkled sea beneath him crawls. When we, when we pronounce the word the, normally we don't emphasize it in our natural speech. So the is going to be unstressed. The next word, wrinkled, ring, is emphasized. So it's going to be our stressed syllable. When cold, the unstressed syllable on cold is going to be annotated as well. Now we need to just make our way through the rest of the line. C beneath him crawls. C is going to be stressed. Beneath him crawls. According to our I am, each unstressed and stressed syllable is considered a foot. So now we need to separate out this line with the feet. So we have one unstressed syllable and one stressed syllable. This is our first foot. Unstressed, stressed. Unstressed, stressed. Unstressed, stressed. So the first line has one, two, three, four feet in the line. Let's take a look at the next line. He walk, he walk, chis. From his mountain walls. One, unstressed, stressed. Unstressed, stressed. Two, unstressed, stressed. Three, unstressed, stressed. Four. Our second line has the same amount of feet as the first which means that we have a distinct meter in this poem. Our last line goes as follows. And like a thunderbolt, he falls. Unstressed, stressed. Unstressed, stressed. Unstressed, stressed. Unstressed, stressed. One, two, three, four. Again, four feet in each line. Each foot has a unstressed and a stressed syllable. Each of those feet is called an I am. There are different types of meter though. They don't always go in the same pattern as unstressed and stressed. Sometimes you can have two stressed syllables together. Let's take a look at the other types of meter that are included in our textbook. The first additional type kind of meter is called a troche. This includes one stress syllable followed by an unstress syllable. For example, like the word twinkle. In the word twinkle, we have our stress syllable, twink, 
and cool are unstressable. A spondy is two stressed syllables in a row, like the word schoolyard. Schoolyard is a compound word, and both of the syllables in the word are stressed. The next kind of meter is called a dactyl. This includes one stressed syllable followed by two unstressed syllables, like in the word beautiful. Beautiful is a stressed syllable followed by two unstressed syllables. And last is anapest. Anapest is the exact opposite of a dactyl because it's one unstressed syllable followed by two stressed syllables, like in the word comprehend. Our word comprehend, com is unstressed. Pre and hen are stressed. With an I am in different poems, there can be a certain number of feet in a poem. Depending on the number of feet is what kind of meter you see. The first kind we would see would be diameter, which would mean that there would be two feet in a line of poetry. For example, in our line of poetry, and for redress of all my pain. And for redress of all my pain. Each line has two unstressed syllables and two stressed syllables. When we do our I am, we would include one unstressed syllable and one stressed syllable. One, one unstressed, one stressed, two. Unstressed stress, one, unstressed stress, two. This is called iambic diameter. which means two feet per line. In our line of poetry, we romped until the pan slid from the kitchen shelf. In our first line, we is unstressed. Romped is only one syllable, so it's going to be stressed. Until the pants slid from the kitchen shelf. Each line is going to have an unstressed, and a stressed syllable. So, unstressed, stressed, one, unstressed, stressed, two, unstressed, stressed, three. Same for our next line. Unstressed, stressed, one, unstressed, stressed, two, unstressed, stressed, three. This is called iambic trimeter which means there are three feet per line. In our poem from before, the wrinkled sea beneath him crawls and watches from his mountain walls. We have the wrinkled sea beneath him crawls. So in each I am, we want to include an unstressed and a stressed syllable. Unstressed, stress, one, unstressed stress, two, unstressed stress, three, unstressed stress, four. Same for our next line. Unstressed stress, one, unstressed stress, two, unstressed stress, three, unstressed stress, four. This is called iambic tetrameter. Which means there are four feet per line. In our next line, but soft, what light through yonder window breaks, it is the east and Juliet is the sun. We're going to do the same thing we did with the others. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks, it is the east and Juliet is the sun. In our first line, unstressed, stressed, one. Unstressed, stressed, two. 
unstressed, stressed. Three, unstressed, stressed. Four, unstressed, stressed. Five, unstressed, stressed. One, unstressed, stressed. Two, unstressed, stressed. Three, unstressed, stressed. Four, unstressed, stressed. Five. This is called iambic pentameter, meaning five feet per line. Now I know what some of you guys are thinking. In our second line, Juliet, Juliet is three syllables, not two. That's because we're taking a look at a line from Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Shakespeare is one of the most famous poets and playwrights to use iambic pentameter in almost all of his writing. We're gonna be taking a look at Romeo and Juliet later this year. But when we're talking about iambic pentameter, it's important to note that this is what Shakespeare uses in his plays. In this second line, it is the east and Juliet is the sun, there can be some things that could be lost in translation. Because Shakespeare wrote his plays about 500 years ago, there could have been a different way to say the word Juliet that had two syllables instead of three. This type of meter is the meter we're going to more often see in our poetry. And this is the one that we really need to focus on as we move forward. To keep in mind that iambic pentameter has five feet per line, which includes a total of 10 syllables per line, half of them stressed and half of them unstressed in the format unstressed, stressed. We'll be taking a look at more of this as we continue on. It's also important to know that Shakespeare wrote in iambic pentameter and a lot of his lines don't rhyme. This is called blank verse. Blank verse is different than free verse because free verse doesn't have any rhyme or meter, but blank verse does have a meter. It has iambic pentameter and doesn't rhyme. And that's about it for meter. There are lots of different ways that poets can set up their poetry, whether it's through rhyme and whether they have a meter using stressed or unstressed syllables in them. It can be kind of confusing, so feel free to rewatch this video, take notes, and of course use your textbook if you have any additional questions. I hope this helped you understand how to annotate meter better and understand it in poetry. I will see you in class. Have a great day.